He is happy whose circumstances suit his temper, but he is more excellent who can suit his temper to his circumstance. It is an absurdity to believe that the deity has human passions, and one of the lowest of human passions, a restless appetite for applause. Beauty is no quality in things themselves. It exists merely in the mind which contemplates them, and each mind perceives a different beauty. When men are most sure and arrogant they are commonly most mistaken, giving views to passion without that proper deliberation which alone can secure them from the grossest absurdities. The feelings of our heart, the agitation of our passions, the vehemence of our affections, dissipate all its conclusions, and reduce the profound philosopher to a mere plebeian. A purpose, an intention, a design, strikes everywhere even the careless, the most stupid thinker. Men's views of things are the result of their understanding alone. Their conduct is regulated by their understanding, their temper, and their passions. Reason is, and ought only to be the slave of the passions, and can never pretend to any other office than to serve and obey them. There is nothing to be learnt from a professor, which is not to be met with in books. There is no such thing as freedom of choice unless there is freedom to refuse. A propensity to hope and joy is real riches, one to fear and sorrow, real poverty. The greater part of mankind may be divided into two classes, that of shallow thinkers who fall short of the truth, and that of abstruse thinkers who go beyond it. The most lively thought is still inferior to the dullest sensation. It is to restrain others' selfishness that men distinguish between their own goods and those of others. What a peculiar privilege has this little agitation of the brain which we call thought. But such is the nature of the human mind, that it always lays hold on every mind that approaches it. When we reflect on the shortness and uncertainty of life, how despicable seem all our pursuits of happiness. It's when we start working together that the real healing takes place. It's when we start spilling our sweat, and not our blood.
Let these generous sentiments be supposed ever so weak, let them be insufficient to move even a hand or finger of our body. Abstract relations of ideas are the object of curiosity, not of volition.